What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I'm a graphic designer based out of San Diego. And today I'm going to talk about the new auto animate feature in Adobe XD. This is like a game changer when it comes to prototyping and design because essentially you can design in Adobe XD and animate within the same software. This allows you to make more immersive interactions so that whoever's using your app or prototype or whatever it is, they can actually get a real feel for how it's gonna interact on a device. Before you had to use like After Effects or another motion software to export every single asset and layer, whereas now it's like all within the software. It's gonna feel like the real deal, like you actually have this thing coded out and developed. So I'm pumped about this feature and I've already been sort of playing around with it a little bit and I know that I haven't even scraped the surface as far as like what it's capable of. But yeah, with that said, let's uh, let's jump into XD and I'll show you guys how to use this new feature and create a really polished looking micro interaction. All right, so just jumping right in, we've got a project that I started here. It's pretty minimal. It's basically an adventure type style design. Uh, this is actually a shop that's in my neighborhood that's pretty cool called Rove. They've got some really cool stuff, bags and shirts and camping gear and things like that. I'll actually pull them up real quick so you can see. So yeah, this is their website. It's called rove.camp is the URL. And they've got some really cool products here, backpacks, uh, different camping supplies. They actually have this collection of shirts that are like parks projects. So, you know, a bunch of sweet designs that reflect all the national parks in the USA. So there's like a Joshua Tree one, a Death Valley one. You got hats here. So yeah, lots of cool stuff going on here. And that sort of served as my inspiration for this design that we're going to work with today. All right, so here's my design that I put together, which is basically a category page for the backpacks that they carry on their site. So I wanted it to be something that people could interact with and kind of scroll through and discover the different bags that they carry. So I was thinking that this section right here could be cards that kind of scroll left and right as you drag your finger across the screen. So you can see I already have kind of a ghosted card here that's smaller. I want this to, to basically come left to right so that this card will replace this one on the left. In order to animate anything, you have to have at least two artboards so that you're actually creating a prototype because a prototype doesn't consist of just one screen. So in this case, we're just going to duplicate this artboard. We're going to hold Option or Alt and drag over here to the right. So this artboard serves as our start state and this is going to serve as our ending state. Now they look the same right now, but we're going to make some tweaks here. The first thing we want to do is select the element that we want to animate. So in this case, it's going to be this whole first card and this text. What we're going to do here is we're going to go up to the prototype tab and see how we now have this selected and we have the ability to basically move this element. We're gonna click this little blue arrow and drag it over to this artboard. That's basically building the relationship between the artboard so that XD knows that these two things are gonna be animated together. Now, if you come up to your dropdown for triggers, you have a few different options. You've got tap, drag, and voice. Now, we're not gonna to talk too much about voice right now. That'll be another video, but I know you guys are looking at that. Um, we're gonna go with drag. And the action that we want is auto animate. And let's just put some easing, easing and out on this. Now, we'll come to our second artboard and we'll just move all this information over. Let's just preview what that looks like really quick. Let's select our first artboard and go to the play button. And look at that. Now I'm able to drag this over, it's magic. Now that's cool, but we still want to make this a little bit more dynamic. So I think what we're going to do is as we drag this item over, we want this rover pack to get bigger and sort of take the main stage. So in order to do that, it's simple. We literally just go and resize it. See, it matches our other one. And then we'll shrink this one down. So let's try that again. And look at that interaction. It's just so smooth and buttery and just really kind of gives that polished look that we want. So yeah, this is looking sweet. It feels really premium and like something that would actually be developed, you know? All right, I feel like we can get weird with this. Like, let's really push the limits of what this feature is capable of. I, like, I wanna show you guys how powerful this feature is. And it's very simple, it's super simple. So let's go ahead and make like a product page for one of these bags. You know, you click on the card, you open up a page where you can buy or add to cart. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I wanna do is, let's just duplicate this artboard and bring it down. Remember how we did that earlier? It's kind of the same concept here. So this is our, our second state of our interaction. Um, this being our first page. So we have to decide what we want to trigger this. So in this case, I feel like the whole card would basically trigger this interaction. We're gonna drag down here. And then instead of drag for our trigger, we're gonna make it a tap. So you're gonna be able to click on this card and it'll trigger this interaction. Auto animate is good, ease and out's good. Let's do maybe 0.8 seconds. So there's a little bit of a delay. Now, 
on the second screen, we have to decide what we want to happen. So I kind of want this bag to take center stage and everything else can go away because we don't need this hero anymore. We're basically on a product page. So I'm going to go back to my design tab just so that I have more control over all my elements. I'm going to move you out of the way and I think I want this, uh, I think I want my image to kind of bleed off the page and get bigger. And maybe it moves up about here. And then maybe our text comes above the image. And maybe we even left a line, this little guy up here. This is where you can kind of just play around and see what works, kind of through trial and error. And let's see, I want this V more to come completely off screen. I want this to get out of the way. So let's go ahead and preview what's going on so far so you can kind of see what's happening as we're doing this. So go to your home screen, click play. And look at that, it's already starting to do some cool stuff here. I'll play that again. Whoa, and so we have a background blur on this nav bar so you can see when that happens, the image is actually kind of going behind it and you can see it through it like rice paper. All right, cool. So we're, we're getting there. Let's, let's do some more stuff. I think that maybe we could put like a close button here that is like derived from another element. So if I select my artboard, let's zoom out a little bit. I want this um, this sort of like clay color, this color block to come back down here and basically make like a button to close this so you can go back to the previous screen. So I'm gonna grab my color block and just kind of bring it down. And we don't necessarily need this text, that can kind of stay up there. Maybe it's a perfect square, let's do like a 120. Ooh, that's not 120, 120 by 120. Sometimes you gotta zoom in just to see what's going on here. I might move all this down a little bit too. Okay, so let's just double check and see what that's doing real quick. Ooh, you see that little transformation that just happened there? Now let's make a little close button for that. Move this over a little bit. What we'll do is we'll grab our navigation menu here. We'll copy that and we'll use the same shapes to make our close button. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna paste. I pasted it right on top. Let's just center this real quick. And I'm gonna make these white. And I'm gonna get rid of one of these guys because we're making a little X here. And I'll just type in 45. And we'll grab our other one and type in negative 45 because we want it to be the basically opposite of it. And we'll just drag it down. And now we have a little icon. Let's actually group this. Oh, it's actually already grouped here. We'll just call it icon close. And let's just make sure it's centered again. Cool, so that's our close button. So what we can do is we can select this whole thing and give it a trigger. So let's select our little arrow and just drag back to that screen. Tap, auto animate, 0.8, cool. So let's just test that real quick. All right, looking good. If we wanna go back, look at that. That is just glorious. I'm sorry I'm like nerding out on this, but this is something that designers have wanted for a long time. It just, it really adds that level of detail and finesse that we want. So as you can see guys, this is a super awesome feature that has a lot of power behind it. Trying to replicate these same animations in other software like After Effects would have taken probably triple the amount of time because you'd have to export every element. For sake of time though guys, I actually just went and finished all these uh, micro interactions on my own. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like right here though. So. We'll click, we've got some colors coming in, we've got some text and price. Just a few more elements that I put in here to spice it up, but 
It's looking pretty sweet. So yeah, as you can see, this is a super awesome feature that is really easy to use and it's super powerful. Like the things that you can do with it are just limitless. And, you know, I really want to see what you guys come up with. Uh, you know, send them my way. I would love to review some of your designs and, you know, your animations and things like that. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe. Maybe throw a little like on there or maybe share it to somebody that maybe could benefit from this new feature. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.